Cam Redden, and this is your homecoming on 2 SSR FM. And uh, you may have seen, if you saw the video we posted on Facebook earlier today, if you follow local news like I do, as many of us do at the station, uh, we tend to source our stories from many places, some from the leader, some from word of mouth, and some also from Cronulla News. Now, this is the independent publication started a few years ago by John Mulcair and his mate Brad as well. Uh, two journalists from the Shire, and they've done some fantastic work over the last few years for the the local area of Cronulla, the surrounding suburbs, and also for the Sutherland Shire. Some great works of journalism told some great stories. And we read earlier this week in this week's issue, the April 4 issue of Cronulla News, that this could potentially be the last issue of Cronulla News. After two years telling some fantastic stories, they announced largely for financial reasons that this would be the last time we would read an issue of Cronulla News. Well, John Mulcair was one of the brains behind Cronulla News. He's the editor of Cronulla News, and he's good enough to give me a few minutes on the show this afternoon. John, I really appreciate your time. Oh, no trouble. Cameron, how are you doing? Very well. It's great to have you here, John, and I suppose the, the overwhelming question to ask, is this the final goodbye for Cronulla News? Uh, that's the $64,000 question. I think in the mm. last piece I wrote, I said that uh, a bit like the Eagles or Dane Nelly Melbourne, we were, all ready, uh, we were ready to make a comeback under the right conditions. So it's not a definite no, I guess, which is promising news. Yes, I would hope so. Uh, we uh, it, Electronic publication's a, a difficult game. Mm. Uh, it's still quite new, and uh, the, all of the traditional print media are having enormous problems. And uh, the full transition hasn't yet been made. Uh, my uh, publication started as a hobby, uh, mm. basically a weekly blog. And then uh, my old uh, mate, uh, Brad Forrest, who was the sports editor at the Leader when I was there, uh, he came on board. He started writing sport. We grew to a weekly, and uh, sorry, to a daily. Mm. And uh, we're getting up to 200,000 reaches a month on Facebook. So we're doing, we're doing pretty well, but... Uh, it was taking an enormous amount of time and effort, and uh, we had some uh, terrific support from people like tradies. Mm. But uh, in the end, uh, we just made the decision that given the time and effort that was going into it, uh, with the uh, uh, compared to the uh, return we're getting from it, it was just difficult to justify going ahead with it. And I don't want to get too meta, but I suppose, unfortunately, that tells a, a sad story about print media as a whole. It's getting far more difficult for, for any sort of publication that relies on whether it's electronic printing, your physical newspaper. It's just getting very difficult in, in the 21st century to, to get something running and not compromise on the quality. Well, uh, I think one of the really heartening things for us is that uh, we're, we obviously work in a low-cost environment, uh, which is... Uh, uh, the opposite to what the uh, traditional media have to work in and mm. what they're trying to survive in. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that given the responses from the community uh, when we said that it was going to be our last issue, uh, pretty much uh, reinforced what we thought was the uh, reason why we were actually doing pretty well. Uh, we reported uh, specifically local news and uh, we tried to do it to the highest standards. Uh, we operated to... The, uh, the normal high standards that we would apply as journalists on a good paper. Mm. And uh, I think that that was appreciated. And uh, they were the two things that came through in all of the feedback which we got in regard to that final story. So uh, we know, if you like, what we did write and we know where we fell down. So, uh, in fact, we know where we succeeded, where mm. we failed. So that gives us the opportunity to analyse again where we've uh, been uh, from and where we could go to. So, um, yeah, it's closed for the minute. Whether it'll come back uh, as it was or in another form, uh, we're thinking about that at the minute. Hundreds of thousands of residents across the Shire. You've seen some of the, the feedback on social media, online. Um, like you say, it started out as a hobby for you, turned job. I mean, you must be very proud of what you've achieved in terms of telling the stories and becoming such a beloved part of the local community over the last two years? Well, the, the, that was the great surprise because um, uh, I literally started because I was bored. That's <laughs> how uh, all great things uh, start, uh, isn't it? <laughs> well, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and one of the other things was that uh, as a journalist, I was firmly convinced that uh, the Cronulla area was being underreported. Hmm. So uh, I decided to do something about it. If anyone had told me what would happen... Uh, I would have thought, no, that's really a bit fanciful. Mm. 
Mm. I remember getting extremely excited when I got to 100 likes on Facebook. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I think we ended up with about 6,500. 6,500, that's right. I mean, that's, that rivals the leader. They, only, they don't have too many more than that, mm. and they have a full team there. That's not tearing down what they do at all. But, I mean, it goes to show oh, no. how um, beloved you guys have become and the, the role you play, not just in Cronulla, because it's expanded right out to across the Shire with the stories you've told. That's extraordinary. Yes, I remember having a, a, a discussion with your colleague, Bob Burkhead, mm. and he said, uh, you know, why don't you do more stories uh, more broadly across the Shire? And uh, I said, well, uh, the Shire ends at Tarrant Point Road, Bob. <laughs> so, uh, That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, look, you know, we, we got a lot of demand to report more broadly, but uh, it really wasn't possible with just Brad and I. Uh, we, we couldn't cope with the volume of mm. stories which we had to, uh, on offer in uh, the Cronulla area and uh, we would love to have done more of that but uh, it came down to the bottom line that there were two of us mm. and uh, no matter how hard we wanted to work it actually moved from well and truly being a hobby into a full-time job and uh, given uh, it, that we're getting little revenue and we're also foregoing earning um, it uh, made the decision, all the decisions stayed difficult, but in the end it was pretty much inevitable. A hundred and I should say 1,600 articles written between you uh, and Brad as well. Thousands of people reached every week. If, the, if this is the last issue that Cronulla News publishes, how would you like the publication to be remembered? Well, <laughs> I'd like, to, like it to be remembered well. Uh, I, I, I really think that... Uh, well, when, when I started out, uh, my ambition was that uh, I would like it to be the local rag. Mm. Uh, that that was what I started on in Griffith uh, quite a long a few years ago, and uh, it, it was the local rag. People read it, uh, they wanted all their news from it, the hatch match and dispatched, mm. uh, all of those sorts of things. Uh, nothing really more uh, fancy than that. Uh, I think that given... Uh, the response that we got gotten over the, over the two years that it was being published, and uh, in particular through the response we got when the last story went up, I think we achieved that. Um, I know we were extremely well regarded by the surf lifesaving movement, mm. uh, and, uh, and you know, they were just one example of the community groups which uh, I think came to rely on us to a certain degree to... Uh, get their achievements and their aims and objectives uh, out there amongst the community. And uh, yeah, we broke some great stories along the way. So there's a lot of journalistic uh, satisfaction, if you like. Uh, professionally, it was great. Mm. Um, but but um, anyway, um, it, you, you continue optimistic mm. and uh, hopefully that there, hopefully there may be a resurrection in some form. On that uh, on that note, John, what what can we expect next from you? Still going to be a popular name around the Shire, I imagine. Uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm probably almost inescapable, uh, but uh, I've been here, around here too long. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I suppose it's in the DNA of journalists that you uh, continue to be inquisitive. Keep an eye, um, yeah. That uh, you're competitive in getting news. Uh, you want to get it out there first. Uh, you like to uh, inform your community, ensure that your community is informed. Uh, you like to ensure that uh, if there's rocks that need to be kicked over, uh, you kick them over and uh, you do it to high standard. Uh, I think that's the way that I've always worked and um, uh, maybe there's ways of still continuing to do that. Mm. If there's a rock to kick, kick it over. It's a great motto. I like it. I'm going to stick it under my belt and use that one. John Mulcair, <laughs> uh, editor of Cronulla News. Mate, you've done a lot of great things over the last couple of years, and I hope, and as I'm sure many other do across the Shire, that this isn't the last we'll be reading something you pop online. John, all the best, and thanks for your time. Good on you, camera. Thank you, mate. John Mulcair, editor of Cronulla News, which has possibly printed its last issue this week. Uh, they've done some fantastic works of journalism, not just in the last few weeks, but in the last few years. And as you heard there, 
Uh, John and Brad have dedicated their careers to journalism and more recently to journalism in the Shire. And they've told some fantastic stories. You can still go and read every single one of them online, cronullanews.sydney. It's not the usual .com. It's the cronullanews.sydney. We'll chuck a, uh, a link online on the Facebook page on the website as well. You can go through the full catalogue is there. And we've also posted a link to the goodbye and thank you, which was posted on April 4, which was earlier this week. Cam Redden, and this is your homecoming on 2SSR FM.